an odd one to talk about because I feel like, you know, it might come across like I am judging, but I'm not judging. But I kind of am, but I'm kind of not, right? So I've seen this really interesting um, little, I saw this really interesting video, this mix courtesy of um, Whore that features this DJ called Dragon Girl. And in this particular video where Dragon Girl plays, um, it's very apparent when you watch the video that she has, you know, very, very, very long armpit hair. And she has a, this incredibly revealing top on. So you can see her boobies bouncing around as she's dancing and shit. And it's kind of hard not to see these things. Again, I'm not trying to objectify her, but it's just an imperative of what we're seeing. It made me think of two things. Number one, it made me think of that thing I said before when it comes to like DJing and stuff. There's this, un there's this thing that people kind of don't want to talk about where it's like part of the success of somebody or part of your ability to be successful is sometimes your image. And if you're a woman, sometimes I can imagine it could be very difficult to kind of wrestle or to, you know, accept that if you are conventionally attractive, like you'd probably want to use it to your advantage because the DJing field and the DJing industry is incredibly competitive. I think I'm an amazing DJ. I think I'm probably one of the best out there and I don't play anywhere, right? I'm just somebody playing in their fucking bedroom. So if I think I'm really good, there must be a bunch of people out there who are playing in a couple of bars, a couple of clubs here and there who never get a chance to play at some of the bigger clubs. So the competition is crazy. There's probably too much of us DJs and not enough opportunities. So any angle advantage that you could get to kind of give yourself a head start, to jump in front of the queue, to squeeze in here, squeeze in there you should take it whether it's affirmative action like the kind of thing that i was proposing about fold right like trying to quote unquote fake cancel fold but only having white resident djs and then getting myself propped up to be the only black resident dj there fuck it however you get in you get in but then once you get in you show and prove with your talent and your skill and if it's your uh, attractive female or attractive woman um once you get in um with your looks and what you know and maybe your assets and stuff why not then once you get through the door prove them right by completely changing your looks or whatever or maybe not making it super important but then focusing mainly on your art so that people can be respectful of you as an artist not just because you look really hot and they want to oogle at you those are two things but i wonder i'm wondering now if that's necessary and if that's the right way to think about things and maybe me just talking away about it that way that I'm talking about it is maybe adding to the problem. I'm not really too sure, but it is quite interesting to see this sort of stuff because it's kind of very apparent, very striking and kind of something you can't really unsee. But it also goes to show like how, you know, how far we have to go as a society that I would see a woman playing, you know, in a, a woman playing a live stream DJ set and the first thing that I would notice apart from what she's playing and whether or not I like the music or not would be the armpit hair sticking out of her armpits right that'd be the first thing I'm noticing not even literally her looks literally more so just the armpit hair in the armpits the first thing that kind of came to mind when I was seeing this clip um you know playing here in the background here which I've got to mute because obviously the flipping songs are definitely going to be um copyright striked and stuff right that's the first thing that kind of came to mind I couldn't unsee this when i originally saw it i was like bloody hell mate those are some real hairs underneath there it's like i haven't seen a woman that looks like that in a very long time now don't get me wrong in berlin it's definitely something a lot of women have kind of adopted as um as um as a feminist sort of thing in terms of kind of trying to i guess uh buckle the conventional you know beauty standards and whatever it may be or something to do with the patriarchy i'm not really too sure but it's definitely something that you see a lot in berlin but it's definitely something that i remember just checking now and um, when i see this kind of coming across my timeline i was like oh you don't really see that too often but again i think personally for me as i said when it comes to my advice when it comes to trying to get into the scene if anybody wants my advice which you really shouldn't take because i'm nobody but i feel like you should use every advantage every advantage to get through because unfortunately this industry isn't really about your skill about your ability to play music and shit yes it's nice that this set that she's playing um you know it's not really my type of music it's a little bit hyper poppy it's a little bit euro trashy euro dance hard dance whatever you want to call that style of music it's not really for me but in terms of her construction of a set it sounds really good she's a proficient dj she can clearly sequence properly has a good ear for tunes can mix all the things that you want to be a dj 
but I wouldn't be talking about her right now if she wasn't wearing this top and if she didn't have these very long armpit hairs underneath her arms. It's that's the fucking reality of it. And that's the real unfortunate reality of the scene and maybe life in general. The work and the quality of work really doesn't matter. It really is all about image. And if you're able to harness that for your for yourself, um, to your benefit, you can really go a long, 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 long way. Um, and it's one of those unfortunate parts of the industry. It really, really is. Because I'm sure, most likely, again, I haven't checked her social media, but I'm pretty sure her social media is pretty popping. She's probably got a decent social media. You know, she's a good-looking um, Caucasian lady um, who wears what she wears and stuff. And she probably lives in Berlin and whatever it may be. I'm sure she's got a fairly decent social media following as well so you know whatever you can do to get ahead whatever you can do to kind of burst through do it but then i think what you owe to yourself to do oh she's wearing production headphones is it interesting she's wearing headphones that you meant to wear as a studio as dj but anyway it doesn't matter so but one thing i think you should do if you are that person who uses your looks as uh as a sort of like um trojan horse to get in you owe it to yourself if you're a real artist and you really want longevity in the scene. I think it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter, actually. Let me scrap that. If you get in just on your looks and you just want to do a cash grab anyway, right? Fuck it. Because you're not, you know, again, we, we all know how flipping, how it works in the entertainment industry for women is anyway. It's very different compared to men. Women don't have a longer shelf life. Do you know what I mean? For some reason, men can play at the highest levels, like, you know, the Carl Cox or these kind of guys until they're very, very old age. But for some time, for some reason, women only get a certain window of opportunity of when they can really make a lot of money and really be out there doing what they need to be doing. So maybe just take advantage of it. Rago. It doesn't matter if you want a long, a long career, a short career take advantage of it because honestly no one is really out here trying to listen to your skill as a dj they don't care about that they care about if you have a lot of followers they care about if you can sell a lot of tickets they care about if you look good on social media which will allow you to have good engagement and get good plays on instagram reels and have a lot of likes on instagram and a lot of whatever whatever they call the likes on fucking tiktok and shit all of that stuff is more important than your actual skill so why not why not use it to your advantage fuck it fuck it it really is fuck it time because the scene in the industry doesn't care that's why i really had a hard time with this whole like gendered quota or the gendered lineups and shit at raves it really was kind of insulting because it kind of suggested that there wasn't a whole slew of people out there just imagine i'm not even a fucking white male right i'm not even a boring looking white male those guys that always used to play minimal events back in the day but can you imagine how annoyed you'd be being a boring looking white male who was around the minimal time and you could never play because all the minimal dj heads that were playing back then were the same old people that are still around now right the lucianos the ricardo villalobos and all these type of guys right um the zip and all these type of things right and then imagine you're trying to come up during a minimal heyday and they're not letting you play because only the big guys are playing and then people tell you oh no we're gonna make the, the lineups 50 50 now women and men so now your chances of playing have gone down to 50 those 50 they're gonna play from men's side are definitely gonna be people that don't look like you they're definitely gonna be more people that look like me and then they're also going to pick loads of women just because they happen to be born women or they happen to be identifying as women. That would be super frustrating. So the whole gender lineup thing doesn't actually address the issue, which the issue is there's not enough fresh lineups in general, whether it's in the LGBTQ queer scene, whether it's in the POC scene, whatever scene it is, it's still the same 10 to 20 people playing the same fucking raves or it's playing different type of raves but it's the same bloody lineups really for the most part and that's the main thing that needs to be kind of sorted and handled but they don't really which is why you have to give places like Bergheim really a lot of credit because even though they're a big club and they have all their issues they do really well to kind of platform and to give chances to people who are fairly unknown a good example is that DJ Maria right I remember when I checked her profile the first time she got booked in Bergheim I can pretty much I'm pretty certain I remember her followers being like 2,000 or something on Instagram. Maybe even less. Yeah, maybe even less than that. Just around the kind of followers that I have on there, right? And she got booked to play at Burkhine. And then suddenly now, I think her profile's obviously blown up. But that clearly showed you that she was somebody that was maybe known on the local scene, maybe known to people behind the scenes or the bookers over there in Burkhine. But it was, wasn't a booking that was done because she can sell a bunch of tickets and she's super famous. No, it was a booking done because they liked her music. 
They respect her as an artist and they want to give her a chance. And you don't see that happening enough, you know? You, so that's why people are having to do this whole like, oh, let's do gendered lineups. Let's make it half black, you know, and brown people, um, people who, who kind of present as a certain way, people set from a certain sexual orientation. It's like, no, the main issue is that you need fresh faces in general. Forget picking people based on their genders and stuff like that. Just bring in fresh faces and then all that stuff will sort itself out. But it don't. And this situation we're in. So if that situation we're in, Use whatever you can use um, to get further. And then once you get in, make sure that you focus on the art. Because unfortunately, if you keep presenting in this way and that's the only thing that you're selling, you can't then complain, I don't think, when you then attract a very toxic part of the dance music scene that also exists, that only likes a look oogle at attractive young ladies who dance behind the flipping um, decks and shit. You have to be conscious of that. I'm, I'm sure they are. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, I think that's an unfortunate part of the scene that there's also a group of, like, weird dudes that hang around, you know, following, um, you know, quote-unquote hot DJs around and shit and propositioning stuff on social media. It's very, very odd. But, in general, that's why I thought when I saw it. So, big up. What's her name? DJ Hot Girl. What is it again? Dragon Girl or something? Uh, DJ Dragon Girl. Available now, whore, September 19th. DJ Dragon Girl. Check it out if you haven't already. Let me just check it off mute so you can hear briefly what it sounds like. Yeah, you, you, you get the gist, innit? You get the gist. You get the gist. So, yeah, big up DJ Dragon Girl. I'm smashing it, doing her thing. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Hopefully, you liked what you saw. And if you enjoyed that, please make sure you check out her whore mix available where you know where whore mixes are. And you can listen to that at your leisure. Listen to that at your leisure. <laughs>